Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Anna and I'm a little bit spooky. And we have got some incredibly wild hair today. We've got, like I look like a forest witch with all this hair. I don't know what's going on with it. I'm, I'm back on my curly girl bullshit, so here we go. Anyway, today I just want to sit down and do a makeup swirl. I don't want to talk about life. I don't want to talk about reality, the real world, none of that. I'm going to just turn it off and I'm going to play with some eyeshadow. We're going to play with the Urban Decay G-Train palette. It's a little mini on the run palette and do a pretty green look, get lost in the makeup. We're just doing a little makeup therapy, a little bit of escape, and we will talk about all the reality stuff another day in real life and crappy stuff another day because I can't talk about it today. Just, just kind of can't. Anyway, if you want to see how I got this look and spend some time with me and just old school tutorial style, just go ahead and keep on watching. Before you do, please like and subscribe and comment down below. Let me know how things are going for you, how you holding up. Yeah, just tell me some good stuff down below. It's positive, happy things. And uh, feel free to send me pictures of your pets over on Instagram and Twitter. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into this makeup look. Okay, let's get started on this look. I am going in with the Urban Decay on the Run G Train palette. I want to do something green. Surprise, surprise. So we're gonna use these beautiful greens on the end here and do something smoky and fun. So just, I feel like it. <laughs> Starting as always, brows are done, eyes are primed. And we're just gonna jump on in. I'm gonna start with on the brow bone with the shade Breakdown on a fluffy, kind of flat, fluffy brush. I use this to like set my lids and stuff with the translucent powder, all that. It's just a very multifunctional, I don't know, useful little brush. So I'm just gonna use it right in here on the brow. Breakdown is like a satin finish shade, so it's got a little bit of a sheen to it, but it's not shimmery. But it's a little too satin to me to go all over the lid. But it's a nice brow bone highlight. And I feel like starting with the brow bone highlight, you get a really good blend and just, you don't have to be so precise getting it just under the arch because it's just already there. And of course, I'm not going to like anything super shimmery. I'm not into like a crazy shimmery brow bone because I have a big brow bone as it is <laughs> and I don't really need to emphasize it that much. But I do like just a little bit right there under the arch for some lift. And I'll probably go in my face highlighter later and just teensy bit. In the transition, we're gonna go in with the shade Subway, which is just this nice, camel color right here and it's just that perfect transition shade especially with greens it just looks good it just works so i'm just going to take that and run it through the transition lightly to begin with and then build it up i'm going to take it pretty high to the inner part of the brow here i've let my brows grow in so i have a little less lid space and uh, i've just been bringing the eyeshadow up to the brow on this inner part right here i think it looks cool for a more dramatic effect but yeah during uh, this whole like lockdown stuff, I just let my brows go wild. And today I kind of groomed them a little bit, cleaned up hairs that were like way down here and <laughs> way up here kind of thing and trimmed them a little because they were getting insane. But I'm not like plucking or anything like that. I'm just letting them be and do what they want. And just kind of go into the crease. Just making sure everything's very blended. I'm gonna take a little bit more of a detailed fluffy brush or like a smaller fluffy brush, if you will. This is a Morphe M443. I really like this kind of brush for crease work and kind of blending into the transition. So we're gonna take Tunnel next, which is more of the uh, kind of a rusty red shade, a little deeper. It looks more red in the uh, pan than it does on the eye. It pulls just much more warm and not quite as intense on the eye. Maybe on its own it would do differently, but over Subway. I'm just gonna take that. I've got the product on one side of the brush and I'm flipping the brush up and following my brow bone, orbital bone, whatever you call that bone right there, <laughs> rather than my crease because my crease is much lower and my eyes are quite hooded. Well, partially hooded or semi-hooded, whatever you want to call that. Like I have a lid that shows, but I also have skin that overhangs. And mostly that's, you know, with the age that's happened. When I was younger, they were completely flat like that. <laughs> See, they're falling more. My eyes gonna need an eye lift. And I have actually looked into eye lifts before because I do have some asymmetry in my lids quite a bit. But the surgery was not something I wanted to do because it was much more intense than just a li little lift. It was uh, because I had paralysis in the lids, it was gonna be way more involved and intense and it would be a lot of revisions. And it had a lot of downsides rather than <laughs> being worth doing. Like. I'm, I'm, I'm cool. <laughs> I'll just keep my wonky lids, thank you. I'm just bringing the same on the other side with most of the pigment on the top of the brush. 
following that bone shape, kind of tucking it into where like the actual curve of my eyeball is and the bone. It's where my crease would be if my lids weren't hooded, I suppose. And just blending. I am blending this quite high and fairly intensely, building it up because I am going for a little bit of an intense look. I will soften it up some more with the transition shade in just a moment. I just wanted to get this intensity in there first. I have been quite enjoying these little on the run palettes. I was watching Cat's Eye Beauty earlier and she was talking about enjoying little mini palettes. Like this, they're just kind of curated and yeah, yeah, same. I have really been into them lately. It's just something about, I like having the colors all coordinated together and they're a little more affordable and just, I don't know, they're fun. If you have a vibe you're feeling that day, you know to grab for it and you don't gotta bounce around from a million palettes. That being said, I do love a palette with a ton of shades and options in it at the same time, but I like a good theme. I like a well thought out color story. I really appreciate thought into a palette like that. I'm not one to use a rainbow palette or bright neon -y colors like that on myself. It's just not my style. I love seeing looks that are done with them. I think it's beautiful and they're an incredibly talented makeup artist, but I'm just, that's not my style. And that's what makes this unique and YouTube fun because there's people with, you know, various, various tastes and styles and you find somebody who resonates with you and you like their, their vibes and how they do makeup. I like jewel tones, deep colors, neutrals. I like, um, kind of weird, unique shades, but I, I'm not sure I'll describe them. It's <laughs> just sometimes uh, a palette will just grab me. I like very weird looking palettes and very just kind of out of the box shades, but not where they're like rainbow shades, you know? I like uncommon eyeshadow tones. I mean, obviously this palette's not that uh, out of the box necessarily. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in the subway on that fluffy brush now and just come around the edge and just soften out. I like a lot of like melt palettes, put that way. Like they have very unexpected color stories. Well, lately they've been all kind of looking alike, but they use very bizarre, uh, not shades you see in too many palettes. And I feel the same thing about like Natasha Denona palettes. The tones and undertones are very unique and I like that. I very much my style is like the Pat McGrath type palettes, Natasha Denona, melt, those type of color stories. I think the only like Natasha palette that I'm not really that drawn to is the tropical one. I just, I don't like those kind of colors. They're just, they're not for me. I like a very multifunctional palette that I can get soft looks out of, dramatic looks, but isn't just a typical neutral palette, if you know what I mean. You see how I'm doing that? It just makes my eyes look so much more like deeper set. Well, I do have kind of deep set eyes, but they're small and hooded. But this just gives them so much more definition and kind of takes away from how hooded they look and the heaviness of my brow bone and the you know, skin coming down by making that recess in space. It's just like painting or drawing you value and shade to create depth. You're doing the same thing on your eyes and on your face as you contour and all of that. All right, now I'm going to go back to the brow bone just a little bit and just clean that up. Just a touch. I don't want that to get too dark right up against my brow, just on the inner part. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to carve out the crease just a little bit, probably just a half cut crease like I like to do. And then we're gonna go in with the green shade called Night Trip on the lid and go from there and see what we create. I don't have a super strict game plan as usual. I'm just kind of winging it. Yeah, today I don't want to talk about real life or anything else. I just want to talk about makeup because real life sucks right now. And I just want to kind of escape from it <laughs> and just zone out for a little while. So I'm just gonna follow my crease line and just slowly take the concealer just above it to create a larger looking lid and disguising the actual fold in my eye. I'm gonna just go ahead and pull it out of the way. Just a little bit easier. Man, that flowed on like perfectly. The other day I was struggling with my cut crease. Some days things just struggle and then some days they just flow and work. And today's one of those days that things I think are just working, which is nice. <laughs> it's a nice uh, change of pace. I feel like, you know, you struggle at home doing something like your makeup, you go to work and you're gonna struggle with stuff too. It's just like, it just sets the tone for the day. You're gonna bumble about and nothing's gonna work out properly and just be aggravating all day. I had like one day this week that was kind of like that. One or two, just goes fussing with sewing machine, things like that. Just little silly things. I'd rather just be aggravated about that than big stuff. What? How? How did I do such a good cut crease today? Jeez. 
I am on point today with it. Maybe it's because I'm bringing it all the way around and not just doing the half. Is that making it easier for me somehow? I don't know, <laughs> but it's working. And then because I'm using a concealer that I like. I'm using the Milani Conceal and Perfect, which I love on the lids. I mentioned before, I don't like using it under my eyes as a regular concealer really too much anymore, but I love it on the lids because it just, it works. It is fantastic lid primer, basically. Okay, so I'm gonna take a brush that comes with the Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes. I'm gonna take the little packer end because I like these little ends. I use these a lot. The blending end, meh. But I like these little packer brush ends. And I've got about 110 of them because they come with their palette. But they're, they're really good. They're great for packing on pigment. So I'm gonna take Night Trip now and apply that to, I'm gonna put on the middle first. <laughs> And then this side. I think I'm gonna take City Kitty probably and put it on the inner part. So I'm just gonna take that up to the edge of the crease. I'm just gonna pat it on. That is a beautiful green. I'm just gonna let it flow out a little bit. Alright, I'm gonna take a smaller brush. This is a Morphe M24, 124, and just get right up against that line and get it smooth where it meets up to the crease shade. I kind of want to intensify that part. The crease shade, rather. Back to my little ABH brush. I'm going to clean it off. I'm going to go into G Tree Matte Green. I'm going to take that on this outer part. Oh, well, that's a nice color. It's a different tone. So it's adding a little depth. And I'm just going to kind of let it wing out just a little bit. This color on its own would be beautiful on the lid. Just all over. All right, and clean that off. And we're gonna go into City Kitty now. We're gonna pop that on the inner part here and let that float into Night Trip. I think I might add a little bit of jolt in there. It's just something in between the shades. But let's go ahead and do this on the other side so things are even. Now let's take the same brush and take a little bit of jolt and maybe pop that right here in between the two. I think I'm gonna dampen the brush and apply that jolt shade, just get a little more intensity out of it. Oh yeah, there she is, intense. Just gives it a nice, a little bit more of a foiled look. That's the thing with Urban Decay eyeshadows, they tend to apply best with a damp brush, it's particularly their, well, their metallics. Okay, just like they're a little lackluster without, or with a dry brush, they lose it, they don't have much shimmer to them. They can look a little washed out almost. Okay, I'm taking that all the way up pretty high to right at that line where we cut the crease and just let it flow over just a little bit okay that's looking cool now we're now we're cooking fire all right now I'm gonna take some more of night trip maybe we'll take that on a little bit of a damper brush or dampened brush rather and put that right here let it flow into jolt. That is working. Alright, just do a little blending between the two. Just so there's a nice little gradient between the shades. And go into City Kitty and see if we can get a little bit more intensity out of her. Right here on the inner corner. Oh, yep. There she is. Looking good. Okay. So I like that color. It was just looking so bland without... Or just on a dry brush. I'm kind of like taking it right here and just following that line and let kind of hug over the lid shade. I give it a little crescent right there. And see, it makes my eyes look bigger and you kind of don't notice the hoodedness as much. It's just like an illusion of just tricking the eye, catfishing with our hooded lids. Okay, now I'm going to take some more tunnel on A. M506, and we're around here. Okay, so I'm taking tunnel though just right around this edge just to add some more depth right in there and soften this outer corner a little bit so that the green just kind of flows and just soften any harsh lines. I'm using a very light hand. Okay, now we're gonna take the M562 with Subway and just run it just above, just to soften any harshness right there. And just 
back and forth motions, circular motions, you know, whatever it takes to blend it. I don't have like a, a set way that I do it. I just do what instinctually feels right to get the eyeshadow blended. Okay, and that is that done. I, I feel like this look calls for a wing. So we're gonna take the L'Oreal Infallible Flash Cat Eye, which is a favorite pen eyeliner. I've had this for quite a few months now and she is still going strong. This is a great pen and a great price point drugstore. For about 10 bucks. So I'm gonna start right out here. Just keeping the line very close to the lashes. And then as we come out, we will widen, widen her. So I'm gonna take it from here. Kind of relax my eye and see where the wing needs to go. And then pull her back with my eye relaxed. And you see I got this weird little gap there. I'm gonna fill that in now. And join it up. You essentially like creating like a bat wing shape. I'm not really zoomed in enough to show you this very well, but one day I will. That just gives it a little bit more lift and I try to just smooth that out and join it up as neatly as possible. Being very slow and with a delicate touch to look straight ahead. Oh, let me go ahead and get lash line done. Oh god. Oh no. Oh no, it's like leaked. It leaked and it hit me in the eye. Oh, it burns. That was not good. Oh, it did something weird. What did you do? It like splattered into my eye. Oh, come on. That was fun. Okay, good enough for right now. Let me go ahead and try to finish this wing and see what the fuck is going on with this. Wish me luck here. So why don't you go for a very lifted look today? I just watched um, Hindash show how to do lifted eyes, so I was kind of following his eyeshadow technique or his liner technique a little bit. I love watching professional makeup artists and like trying their go-to techniques and seeing how they work in real life on me. And nine times out of ten, they work really well. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and prime my under eyes. Now going back into the Urban Decay palette, I'm going to pull a little brush, just want a little guy. I'm going to take my Morphe M52 and go into G Train, and I go into G Train which is that matte and I'm going to start this outer corner and just blend it from the wing down. Try to keep most of the pigment on one side of the brush so it doesn't go everywhere. And just work your way along, building up slowly. I'm gonna bring this all the way in a little bit, right to right before the tear duct. Again, using a very light hand. And it doesn't look super blended yet. We're getting there. Nothing really on the brush, but whatever's just left over after I just wiped off on the towel in my lap, I'm just gonna blend it and diffuse those edges very softly. Alright, now we're gonna take the shade subway and kind of go underneath and just kind of use that to blend out. It is basically like a transition shade. It helps to kind of squinch your eye a little. Take my 506 which we use in the crease there. I'm going to take just a little bit of tunnel and just kind of deepen up right here. Just a tiny bit. You can't really see this. It's just kind of more adding depth. I'm going to dampen this little brush that we used to blend on the lower lash line. And we're gonna jump into City Kitty and take that right around the tear duct area and inner corner. And that's basically the eyeshadow work done. Um, I will probably go back and tweak a little bit, clean up, um, do lashes, maybe um, tight line my upper lash line. Um, I don't think I'm gonna tight line my lower lash line or do the waterline, but I might add a little bit of black eyeshadow just connecting to the wing, or black eyeliner, rather. So I'm gonna go ahead and go off camera and do all that and do my complexion. We'll be back for the finishing touches. And we're back. I went ahead and finished up complexion makeup and popped on some lashes, did some tight lining, tied up my brows, and have lined my lips. Oh, before I forget, I kind of pulled the City Kitty shade kind of up around and just 
hugged the cut crease, I guess, to kind of emphasize it. That's the only, like, real change I made. And cleaned up the lower lash line a little and all that. So let's go ahead and move on to highlighter. I don't know what highlighter I want to use. At first, I used the, uh, Wet n Wild Photo Focus for foundation today. Concealer was the NYX Born to Glow and powder was the number seven. Triple Action Lift and Illuminate Finishing Powder. <laughs> this guy. And, uh, yeah. I've already lined my lips. Now we're going to move on to highlighter. I don't know what highlighter I want to use yet. Ah, uh, yeah. We will use the Wet n Wild Zodiac Highlighter written in the stars. Kind of used it in a little bit. Um, my lashes, I think, are Kiss Lashes or Salon Perfects. I don't know which. I don't have the carton anymore. Oh, such a good highlighter. I'm kind of going to go a little ham with her because we'll be putting the blush on over it and it will tone it down some. Knock up the excess and just bring a little up here. Down the nose, chin. I'm going to take just a little bit on the inner corner just to really get a little more light in there. Now I'm going to kind of blend all that out a little bit with some blush and make it all melt into the skin and look cohesive and nice. First thing I grab, Barry Amore <laughs> from Milani. So we're going to go in with that and just kind of get that highlight just nice and melted into the skin. Tip of the nose because we're an e-girl and we do that over here. That may be a lot of blush, but Actually, on camera it looks good, but in person I'm like, ooh, I put on too much blush. <laughs> Camera's deceiving. It makes everything look a little less dramatic than it is. Well, I used to line my lips, so it's just a uh, random lip liner from Makeup Revolution, like, little lip kit that was super old and the liquid lipstick with it was god-awful. But the lip liner was bomb, so I still use the lip liner. But, uh, yeah, for my actual lip color, I'm going to use the Stay Matte Liquid Lip Color from Rimmel in the shade strapless. All right, let me just use my hair and we'll be right back. All right, and we are done. And my gosh, my hair is uh, large and in charge today. And I'm I'm kind of loving it. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna have some crazy hair today and we're gonna like it. Well, I mean, I'm liking it. And I don't care if you do or not. <laughs> This is the look complete using the Urban Decay on the Run Mini in G-Train. Yeah, is this look unique or different than anything I've done? No, it's pretty similar to a look I did with the Disney uh, Misunderstood palette from ColourPop. But I like it. I think it's pretty. The shadows blend really easily. So, you know, if you're into small little curated eyeshadow palettes, little small like quads and stuff, I would definitely look at the uh, On To Run palettes because they're quite nice. Uh, just mini review for you. I think the metallics could probably be a little more foiled, but if you apply them with a wet brush, you get a very beautiful effect and it looks nice. The colors are not anything super unique or crazy. It's not shades we haven't seen before because um, I do believe I have had at least one of these in a vice palette. Uh, if you're a fan of Urban Decay shadow formula, you're gonna like these. Urban Decay is like a trustworthy formula, like you know what you get with Urban Decay, but it's not always my favorite formula because you know you need the wet brush, isn't that? But their mattes are very nice and um, these are really good little palettes. I also have the the red one, which is the hot shortcut. And I really enjoyed playing with the shortcut palette. I do believe I have some of these shades also in Vice palette and maybe they're in the On The Run palette, I don't know. I'm, I just that palette did nothing for me. I thought it was really boring. But these were on sale at Sephora, I don't know, quite some time ago at this point. But they may still be on sale and if they are, I do recommend them. They're really fun, they're very travel friendly, they got a great little mirror in them. Just sturdy, nice little palettes. And yeah, if you like a certain color story and it's a color story you wear often, go for it. So, I mean, I, I love green and I love red eyeshadow, so this, I, hell yeah. And I think I paid like $13 for them on sale. But regularly, they're probably about 20 something, 27, I believe. I'm not sure. I'll insert it on the screen. Anyway, mini review. Good little palettes. And I think I've gotten some pretty looks with it. Anyway, that's all for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and spending some time over here seeing how I got this look. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and comment down below. Let me know how you doing out there. I will see you guys in the next one. Stay spooky, stay safe, and I'll see you later.
that out.